ahead and get started. So welcome to our virtual book party. My name is Erin and I'll be your host today. This year, the library is offering book parties a couple of times a month. Our focus for our picture book party this month is friends and family. So how this works is we have five different presenters from our child and family library services department and our storytime specialist team. And they're each going to talk about five books. They each just have about a minute to talk about their books. So this is going to move pretty fast. But don't worry, you don't need to write anything down. I'll be sending out a list of the books afterwards. Just as a reminder, we are recording this session. We can't see or hear you, so the recording will just show our slides and panelists. We will also have the closed captions turned on, but you are able to hide it by clicking on the circle, by clicking on the arrows next to the CC button at the bottom of your screen. If you have any questions, either tech support things or questions or comments about the books, please feel free to put them in the chat and Lori will respond to them as soon as she can during the program. You'll see a slide for each book and then a time reminder slide to help our presenters know when it is time to wrap up their book talks. We will try hard to stay on track. I'm going to have our presenters introduce themselves. Please say your name and your position at the library. Lori Ann, will you please get us started? Hi, I'm Lori Ann Armstrong, and I do outreach to preschools for child and family library services. Hi, everybody. I'm Elaine. I'm a Storytime Specialist. Hi, I'm Mary, and I'm one of the early literacy librarians. Melissa? Um, I am Melissa and I am the supervisor of the Storytime team. And I'm Amika and I am the Storytime Specialist. Thanks everyone. Go ahead and mute yourselves now until it is your turn to share a book. We'll go ahead and get started. Lori Ann will be going first. I'm a Kindness Hero by Jennifer Adams and illustrated by Carmen Lemniscuit. This book is a powerful story that includes diversity in neighbors. It celebrates gentleness and vulnerability in boys and shows that true strength and leadership come from treating those around you with love and respect. Following the journey of a young boy as he practices kindness throughout his day, from building a nesting box for insects to helping an elder cross the street, to showing sportsmanship when losing a game. These examples teach children that kindness empowers all of us through actions, both large and small. I'm a Kindness Hero provides parents, teachers, and childcare providers with a beautiful picture book that offers a new kind of role model for young boys. Um, a standalone title, it also serves as a companion to I Am a Warrior Goddess by the same author and illustrator, which inspires strength, leadership, and empowerment in young girls. As I reread and reflect on this book, I've begun to wonder, what kind of hero am I? I can do it too. This book is written by Karen Biker, illustrated by Ken Wilson Max. I love, love, love this book. And you can get this as an ebook from our library. Get ready for the warm fuzzies. The little girl in this book is the luckiest girl in the world. She is surrounded by love of her family, friends, and neighbors while developing her growing independence and mimicking them, like strumming her guitar with her uncle and getting dressed like her sister, pouring some tea at a tea party with her very best friend, and mixing up some cake batter like grandma. And there's so much more. I love that in her quest for new life experiences, she is always encouraged and supported and affirmed. 
And Karen Biker, the author, she truly taps into the toddler mind of striving to do everything by themselves. The illustrator, Ken Wilson Max, is my favorite illustrator of all time. He illustrates the Lenny series too, like Where's Lenny and Lenny in the Garden, and there's a few more. And with the bright, bold colors and sharp, high contrast, all of these books are perfect for toddlers and babies. And now for something completely different. Finding Friends Francois by Gus Gordon fits into both the family and friends categories. Alice lives with her grandmother in Paris. They spend their days making creme brulee, organizing buttons, and taking walks. It's a nice life, but Alice longs for a brother or a sister or a friend. So she writes a letter, puts it in a bottle, and throws it into the Seine. Who finds it? Francois, of course. Francois lives in a lighthouse on an island, and he's equally excited to have a new friend. Soon they're sending letters back and forth. But when Alice suffers a great loss, she can't bring herself to write anymore. So Francois makes a big decision. This is a sweet, melancholy tale that will tug at your heartstrings. Anyone who's ever had a friend who was as close as family will relate to Alice and Francois. The illustrations are filled with charming details that will make you want to go back to the book again and again. A little content warning, as you may have guessed, the story includes the death of a family member. The book pairs well with In a Jar by Deborah Massero, one of my favorites from last year. Sometimes friends are far away and sometimes they are right in our own neighborhood. My first book is Want to Play Trucks, written by Ann Stott and illustrated by Bob Graham, published by Candlewick in 2018. This is one of the many titles about real life situation in our growing up picture book category. What happens when friends who want to play together like to play with different toys? Jack likes to play with trucks that have loud sirens, while Alex likes to play with dolls that have sparkly dresses. Their solution is to play dolls that drive trucks, which works great until Jack says that dolls who wear tutus can't drive train cranes. Jack and Alex have a tense moment, but ultimately land on a solution that keeps the joint play going. Children ages three to six will appreciate opportunities to stop and talk about Jack and Alex, their toys and their feelings, or to make predictions about what will happen next. Frog and Toad are Friends is very likely a familiar title to you. Written and illustrated by Arnold LaBelle and first published in 1970, it is still offered by HarperCollins Publishers and has been a perennial favorite for generations now. In fact, the copy of this oldie but goodie, oh, I don't know if you can see that, um, that I have in my hand tells me that this book has its 60th anniversary. It's no wonder that it's a Caldecott Honor Book winner. I like that I can reminisce about reading this with my parents and grandparents while I'm sharing it with little ones now. And sharing it at Arapahoe Libraries is easier than ever as we carry this book in our collection as an early reader, as part of a storybook compilation, on Hoopla as an ebook, and downloadable and streaming audiobooks. A little fun backstory about the inspiration for this book. It seems Arnold Lobel and his daughter Adrian were at a movie called Frogs, but it really featured toads. Adrian was not having it and told her dad all about the differences between frogs and toads on the way home. Two years later, saw the arrival of frog and toads, our friends. My next book is Tanny's New Home by Tanny Lua Adewumi. The illustrations are by Courtney Dawson. This is Tanny's true story of immigrating to America developing his talent for chess and finding a new home. When he was just six years old, he and his family fled persecution in Nigeria and became refugees in New York City. Tanny was amazed and a little overwhelmed by all the new things in America, but one new experience turned out to be the most wonderful discovery, chess. With joy, hope, and determination, Tanny studied hard practicing chess for hours on the floor of his room in the homeless shelter. Less than a year later, he won the New York State Chess Championship. <clears throat> At 10 years old, Tanny is currently 
the National Chess Master. This book is perfect for celebrations of World Refugee Day. It's an exciting book about chess family and community and reminds us all that home is a place where you can follow your dreams. I recommend this biography for children ages five to 10. This book is Can I Sit With You, written and illustrated by Sarah Jacoby. So this book is a dog story, and dog stories will always have a special place in my heart. It's a moving story about the unbreakable bond between a girl and her very best friend, her dog. Empathy is a difficult thing to teach, and so many picture books help. This is one of those picture books. This book is a simple but a powerful book of friendship, loyalty, and love. The question, can I sit with you, is asked throughout the story by a dog to a lonely little girl. Their relationship offers her reassurance in meeting new friends, making a new way and a new place, and building confidence and becoming the best person you can be. The little dog is throughout the story just supporting his little girl and being the loyal and true friend that only dogs can be. If you like this one, you might like Before You Were Mine by Maribeth Boltz. I recommend this book for children ages 5 to 8 and dog lovers of any age. And there's a side note, the author has a dog named Walt that the dog in the book was modeled after. Remember how when you were a little kid, you could meet a new person and know right away that you were destined to be best friends forever. This book, My Best Friend by Julie Fogliano and Jillian Tamaki, documents just that kind of friendship. A girl describes everything she and her best friend do, from swinging on the swings to quacking like ducks and pretending to be pickles. A best friend is someone who will help you fix flowers you accidentally squashed, and someone who you like unconditionally, even though they like strawberry ice cream and you hate it. Jillian Tamaki's pencil illustrations, primarily in red and green, capture the energy and joy of young friendship. It is only at the end that we learn that the girls met just that afternoon. This book is a winner figuratively and literally. It was named an NPR Best Book of the Year for 2020. If we're lucky, we have lots of different kinds of friends in our lives. I chose to share Khalil and Mr. Haggerty and the Backyard Treasures because it's a sweet story about an intergenerational and intercultural friendship. This book was published by Candlewick in 2020 and written by Tricia Springstub and illustrated by Elahe Taharian. Khalil lives upstairs with a large and noisy family and Mr. Haggerty lives downstairs quietly by himself, but the two of them literally find common ground in their appreciation for their shared backyard. They hang out there together and Mr. Haggerty helps Khalil read new words and Khalil helps Mr. Haggerty remember words he's forgotten. One day when Khalil fails to dig up buried treasure and Mr. Haggerty has a disappointing garden harvest, they separately hatch a plan to cheer the other up. I like this story because it reminds us that young or old, we can all take care of the people around us. You Will Be My Friend by Peter Brown was published by Little Brown Books for Young Readers in 2011. I remember the first time I saw this book at my son's elementary school. It struck me that the title was not a question asking shyly and sweetly for a new friendship. It was enthusiastic demand, like I want a friend and lucky you are right here. Let's do this. When I opened it up, it did not disappoint. Lucy the bear, the main character, has decided that today is the day. She is going to make a new friend. So she walks out of her den and gets in every creature's space that she meets. She is friendly, outgoing, and tries to include herself in the activity that her new friend prospect is enjoying, but it doesn't work out for the most part. But persistence is key, and this book has a happy ending. This book is illustrated using mixed media art. It's funny, and there might be a little learning about social niceties in there too, but only in the light, funny way. Our library just bought some new copies of this book in a wonder book format, which means that you can read along with the audiobook inside. The next book I chose is titled My Day with the Panier 
by Tammy Charles, illustrated by Sarah Plakois. The story is about a young girl in Haiti who is eager to learn how to carry a basket to the market, just like her madman. As she watches her mother wrap her hair in a mouchoir, Alan tries to twist her own braids into a scarf and balance the empty panya atop her head and realizes it's much harder than she thought. Is she ready to be part of this tradition? My Day with Panya is a story of family legacy, cultural tradition, and hope for the future. It is both inspiring with vibrant illustrations highlighting the beauty of Haiti and lyrical. My heart sings like a shooting star in the midnight sky. And their feet are graceful, their panniers are still, even as the wind swirls about the city. Readers who are curious about the art of carrying a pannier will find out more about this ancient and global practice in an author's note at the end. Um, my next book is called Hero Mom. It's illustrated by Brian Langdo and it's written by Melinda Harden. Melinda Harden has, that's the author, she has a background in mental health counseling. She was inspired to write this book because she, were, she was helping students that were dealing with deployments on a military base. And she started looking for books for younger children to help them with this challenge and she couldn't find any, so she wrote two. Hero Mom and Hero Dad. Hero Mom is the best military mom's book I've read for children because of its simplicity and its depictions of confident women in leadership roles with important jobs like flying helicopters, constructing buildings, and lots, lots more. Although the pictures in the book are all positive, the subject itself, separation of parent and child, is could be upsetting to some kiddos, so I would recommend this and Hero Dad to older children unless a younger child is actually experiencing this kind of separation but children interested in what the military is and single parent families with children aged six to nine would love it too. This book has won a Jane Addams Children's Book Award honor for younger children. When We Were Alone is not an easy story, but it's an important one. In it, a little girl helps her grandmother in the garden and notices things that she asks her grandmother about. Why does grandmother have long hair? Why does she have colorful clothes? Why does she speak another language? The answers, sadly, are a response from a time in history when indigenous peoples in the United States and Canada were forcibly taken to residential schools where they were not allowed to practice their culture and traditions like long braided hair and colorful clothing or speak their native language. Ultimately, this is a story of reclaiming what's yours and Julie Flett's collage illustrations are primarily in shades of brown, except for big pops of color when grandmother is her true self. The author David Alexander Robertson is a member of the Norway House Cree Nation, and illustrator Julie Flett is Cree Matisse. In fact, this book has been translated into the Cree language, and you can purchase bilingual copies. Oh no, Evelyn Del Rey is moving away. Evelyn and Daniela squeeze in their favorite games and visit familiar spaces during one last day before Evelyn moves out of the neighborhood. Sonia Sanchez's digital illustration used brush strokes, stamped patterns, and collage elements to show the rich details of the apartments the girls have spent so much time in together. Author Meg Medina is a past Newbery medalist, and she deftly describes both small moments and big feelings as the friends say goodbye. This book was published by Candlewick in 2020, and is actually also available in our catalog as an ebook, a streaming audiobook, a DVD, and a streaming video, all recommended for children ages four to eight. The last page shows narrator Daniela as a young woman still in that same apartment she grew up in, looking at a box of mementos, a reassuring suggestion that the two mejor amigos, numero uno best friends, found a way to stay in touch.
Families Like Mine by Marie Therese Miller was published this year by Learner Publications. You will find it in the nonfiction section in the children's area of the library, along with the other books in the series that all celebrate the different ways that people live and feel. In this book, all images are photographs of different kinds of families that all show the most important characteristic of family, the caring and loving of one another. The book is like an album, but instead of showcasing one kind of loving family, it showcases the many diverse forms a loving family can come in. It was written for readers of kindergarten or first grade age, but my opinion is that the big clear pictures and simple sentences would be a great read aloud for younger ones too. You're never too young for a positive input. Some of the other titles from this series that share in that sentiment are Feelings Like Mine, Homes Like Mine, and Parents Like Mine. Oh, by the way, Arapahoe Libraries offers this in hardback and ebook versions. That Missing Feeling by and Amy Ludwig Vanderwater and illustrated by Morena Forza. This is a story about how families change. Mia feels as if her life has split in two after her parents get divorced. When she's at her dad's house, Mia misses raking leaves with her mom, counting to three and jumping into the pile. And when she's at her mom's house, she misses riding bikes around the block with her dad. Mia doesn't know how to cope with that missing feeling. Sometimes it makes her feel angry and other times she feels sad. One day when Mia visits her grandpa, he shows her how he copes with his own missing feelings. Grandpa gives her a little blue notebook saying, when I write about grandma, I am sad, but I am happy too. She is gone, but here you are. Life changes in writing helps me think about these changes. Mia takes her notebook wherever she goes, writing about happy and sad memories. Mia's notebook becomes a way to cope with that missing feeling. Our Subway Baby, my favorite for the year so far. It's by Peter Mercurio and illustrated by Leo Espinoza. This heartwarming true story, this heartwarming story is a true story of how one family got a little bigger and a lot better by chance when Danny finds an abandoned baby in the subway station with his umbilical cord still attached. After he calls authorities and they search for his biological parents, Danny can't stop thinking about him and how he's doing. He talks to his partner, Pete, and he also can't stop thinking about him. And although Pete and Danny never in a million years thought that they'd be parents, they end up adopting baby Kevin just two months after they meet him in the subway. They and all their family and friends scramble to get all the baby things they need, and they raise him. Kevin graduates this May, this month with a bachelor's double majoring in computer science and math. This story reminds us of that age-old quote, where there is love, anything is possible. The book made the 2021 American Library Association Rainbow List, and I recommend this book for all people of all ages everywhere. Home is In Between by Mentali Perkins and Lavanya Naidu explores the idea of a child living between two cultures. When Shanti moves with her parents from a village in India to the United States, she finds herself questioning her identity. Is she the girl from the village? At home she feels like it, speaking Bangla and dancing with her mama and eating luchi. But at school and outside her home, she feels like an American girl, playing with her friends, speaking English, and learning about trick-or-treating in ballet class. Shanti is confused. Is she American or is she Indian? Finally, she realizes she can be both at she can be at home with both identities. Mitali Perkins' writing is simple and lyrical, and Lavanya Naidu's bright, colorful illustrations capture Shanti's joy and energy. Mitali Perkins told a story on Twitter about hearing from a foster mother who read this with her foster child. Afterwards, the child said that they also lived in between their biological parents' house and their foster mother's house. So it's clear that this is a great story for anyone trying to figure out where they belong.
Grandpa's Top Threes was published in 2019 by Candlewick Press and was written by Wendy Madure and illustrated by Daniel Agnius. I like this title for four to eight year olds because it shows us that grief and loss is a part of family life and also that those experiences can touch family members in different ways. Henry is used to his grandfather being around, but he's not used to grandpa being so quiet and distracted. Henry's mom counsels patients, so Henry invites his grandpa to play top threes, which is clearly a long-standing game between the two of them. They discuss top three sandwiches and top three jellyfish, and finally, top three grannies. We come to understand that grandpa is grieving the, his wife's death and Henry is missing her too, and that good memories shared together can be a solace. The Big Bed was written by Bunmy Latitan and illustrated adorably by Tom Knight. The main character is a cheeky little girl who uses super smart logic to gently but firmly explain to her daddy all the reasons that it's time for him to get out of the big bed where she and mommy are sleeping. She's getting bigger now, but the bed is not. The reasons for her to stay in the bed with mommy are established. Therefore, it's only logical for daddy to get his own sleeping space. She reminds them that he has his own mommy, AKA grandma, to give him affectionate pats if he needs them. And to sweeten the pot, she even offers to get daddy his own cot that he can order special sheets for. This is a truly funny take on the family bed situation from the child's point of view. This book was published by Farrar, Strauss, and Gouraud in 2018. And I think parents and grandparents will find the situation timeless. The last book I chose is titled When Father Comes Home. It was written and illustrated by Sarah Jung. When Father Comes Home is based on the Korean phrase goose dad, a term that describes fathers who work and live apart from their families. This book is a beautifully written and illustrated story inspired by the author's own experiences. June's father is like a goose. He flies away for long periods of time, which means that June doesn't get to see him very often. When father does come home, he has new stories to tell, including the circle of tigers. June is happy when father comes home from his journey or journeys and happier still when the family plants a tangerine tree together and father tells June, next time I am here, this tree will be bigger and so will you. Caring for a growing sapling is a great responsibility and June takes it very seriously. When an accident happens and the tree topples over, June worries her, his father will never come home again. But things that have fallen can be replanted. The circle of tigers referred to represents the struggles a child might have with any type of parental absence. Baby Moon by Haley Barrett, illustrated by Juana Martinez Neal, who's from Peru. This is an awe-worthy book that celebrates that bonding period between parents and a newborn. And if you've never heard of it, a baby moon is like a honeymoon, a little vacation. But instead of spending time alone with your new spouse, couples get some quiet first days with their newborn. This is such a serene, gentle story of one couple's first days of being new parents. I love that both mom and dad are depicted in the book. Every page shows the new parents completely engaged in this new life they are responsible for and the obvious care that they have for each other. I also love the inclusion of the family pets who are curious of the new addition. The images in this book are soft and soothing and the text is really well written, rhyming and uplifting. I recommend this book for anyone who loves books that radiate love and children ages two to five. And another side note, both the author and the illustrator have two children. This is a trilogy of stories right now called I'm Bored, I'm Sad, and I'm Scared. But it's soon to be a quadrilogy, I had to look that word up, when I'm Sorry is published this summer. Michael Ian Black and Debbie Ridpath-Ohey 
explore emotions kids feel every day with humor and heart. The characters are unlikely friends. A little girl, a flamingo, and a potato? <laughs> Strangely, it works as each has their unique personality and adds something different to the conversation. Feelings are expressed honestly and strategies are given for navigating through them. Young children are just learning how to appropriately express and explain their emotions, and this is a wonderful series for caregivers and teachers and librarians looking to add more books that help with this skill. That's a lot of feelings, Mary. Lily has lots of feelings too, even if she doesn't come out and name them in 10 Beautiful Things, written by Molly Beth Griffin and illustrated by Maribel Lechuga. This book is from Charles Bridge, has multiple starred reviews, and I think it's my favorite book published so far this year. Lily is going to live with Graham. We're never told exactly why, and the two of them are starting the long drive to Graham's house. It's clear Lily is uncertain about this big change, and as a distraction, Graham suggests they look for 10 beautiful things along the way. At the end of the drive, Lily is worried that they've only named nine things, but Graham says the 10th beautiful thing is the two of them together. I could talk about this book for an hour, not for a minute. It's, it's beautiful illustrations, it's different perspectives, and it's gentle message that being open to shared experiences can help connect us to the people we love. The Heart Me Familia, written by Carrie Laura, illustrated by Christine Fatus, and published in 2020 by Imagination Press. This is a birthday celebration story centered around a young girl as she explains that she comes from a bicultural home. Her mom's side emigrated from Europe generations ago, and her dad's side of the family emigrated from Central America when he was a little boy. She notices differences and similarities about the two cultures within her household and celebrates how they're both equally represented in her home life. Her big, beautiful family plans a surprise birthday party for her little brother where the two cultures have melded and everyone's experiences are richer for it. The majority of this book uses English words, but many Spanish words are used in places where the English speaking reader can suss out the meanings through context or the ease of cognates. And I think the opportunity to read and practice with the Spanish words that obviously have special meaning to the main character really brings her message of embracing her bicultural heritage home. Couldn't unmake myself. <laughs> Thanks everyone. That is their titles for tonight and thank you for coming. Even with picture books, we have a lot to say. So thanks for sticking with us, even though we went a few minutes over. Thanks to our panelists for the job of choosing just five favorite, story, five favorite books for this session. I will be sending out the book list to your email. And if you have any questions, feel, please feel free to post them in the chat now. But otherwise, we're all done. Thanks for coming. And our theme for next month will be favorite authors and picture book series.